Good morning, everybody. It's just after 7.30 or just before 7.30 in my office down here in Wellington. Um, quite a cool day out there and it looks like the storm clouds are coming in. So um, that's not very nice, but I'll be inside. So I wanted to touch again on some more regulatory impact statements to do with the education update bill that the government is putting through. It's at select committee now, so I should be able to tell you this week when the submission period will be and how you can go about putting your voice into this uh, conversation, because you need to. But this one is um, another regulatory impact statement and it's called Establishing Enduring Goals or Objectives for Education for Children and Young People Aged 0 to 18. Okay? 0 to 18. And this uh, regulatory impact statement says that the, this part of the bill does four things. It establishes enduring goals and objectives for education for children and young people aged 0 to 14, establishing a mechanism for government to set out its medium-term priorities for early childhood education and schooling, clarifying boards of trustees' roles and responsibilities, improving accountability, planning and reporting for schools. Now, one of the things that's probably most interesting inside this uh, particular regulatory impact statement um, is that it says here there is no appropriate mechanism for government to set out its priorities for the education of children and young people aged 0 to 18. Now, let's be clear, there are three um, major curriculums here in New Zealand. One is Te Whariki for early childhood, the other is the New Zealand curriculum for English medium schools and the other is Te Marotanga or Aotearoa which is the curriculum for Māori medium schools. Now all of those, all of those curriculums have um, key competencies and learning outcomes inside of them. But the learning outcomes or the key competencies are the, um, are the skills that we have identified that were identified through an amazingly transparent and um, collaborative um, consultation process that it identified the key competencies that our young people will need to study, to work and to be lifelong learners and to real, realise their potential. Remembering that we're moving into a period of time where we don't know what jobs are there, we don't know what skills they will need. These were key skills that crossed over everything, that gave them the ability to think, to develop, to innovate um, and, and to prepare them for whatever might come in the future. And then there are learning outcomes inside those curriculums that are offered as a guide for, um, for schools to, to use whatever they needed, to select whatever outcomes they needed that fit the student and met the needs of that particular student. So the New Zealand curriculum, the reason why it's so you know, highly recognised worldwide is that curriculum has the capacity for really individualised learning that will future-proof our young people. What this suggests, this regulatory impact suggests is that this government believes that they will dictate exactly what you should know. So basically it's a spread of national standards all the way from 0 to 18. That they're going to be really, really prescriptive about what every single human being will need to know. And it sounds very narrow. It sounds to me like a move back to the past as opposed to removing some of the constraints upon the current New Zealand curriculums, um, widening the way that we, um, we teach our children, lowering our class size, having much more um, interactive education that I know our teachers would value and I know our students would do well inside of. So that's another regulatory impact statement that you need to be aware of, establishing enduring goals or objectives for education for children and young people aged 0 to 18. What do they mean and how would it manifest? Will it be national standards on one-year-olds all the way through to NCA on 18-year-olds? Okay, ponder that for the day. Bye.